Good day students, welcome to our lesson for this week in Integral Calculus. In this session, we are going to discuss integration by parts. Before we start, let me recall some basic integration formulas. The integral of e to the x ds is equal to e to the x plus c. The integral of sine x dx is equal to negative cosine x plus c. The integral of cosine x dx is equal to sine x plus c. The integral of tangent x dx is equal to ln absolute value of second x plus c. The integral of second x tangent x dx is equal to second x plus c. And the integral of second x dx is equal to ln absolute value of second x plus tangent x plus c. So I also want you to recall other integration formulas that we have discussed previously. Okay, now I want you to remember this one. What do you call this rule? D of UB is equal to UDB plus BDU. Very good, it is called the product rule. Now, uh, I want you to try to evaluate or evaluate each of these integrals or evaluate each integrals of the following given. Number one, the integral of x squared ln x dx. Number two, the integral of x cosine x dx. Number three, the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Number four, the integral of x squared cosine 2x dx. Okay, so we, we don't have formulas for this kind of existing given. Okay, or well, we don't have uh, existing formulas for this kind of given. So that's where going to use integration by parts. So remember, the integral of... Uh, we have the product rule for differentiation, by, but do we have a product rule for integration? Let's say the integral of uv. Okay, so it is not integrable. So we don't have a product rule for integration. Okay, why? Because we only have u and b there is no differential for a given to be integrable there must be a differential let's say we have this the integral of u dv now we have a differential yes it is integrable because we have dv okay now let's derive the integral of u dv from the product rule. Let's say we have this product rule, the derivative of uv is equal to u dv plus b du. Then let us get the integral of each terms. Integrate t of uv equals the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. So here, we have the operator for integration, we have the operation for differentiation, so they will cancel out each other. It will just become uv equals the integral of udb plus the integral of vdu. And then, interchange terms by symmetric property of equality, it will become the integral of udv plus the integral of vdu equals uv. And then apply transposition. So now we have the integral of u dv equals u b minus the integral of b du. So that will be our formula for integration by parts. Remember that the integral of u dv equals u b minus the integral of b du. So our formula for integration by parts were derived or was derived from the product rule. 
for differentiation. Okay? Again, the integral of u dv equals u b minus the integral of v du. This will be our formula for integration by parts. u will be differentiated to get du. And dv will be integrated to get v. Okay? Remember that. So, we have these basic elementary functions. We have the logarithmic functions, inverse trigonometric functions, algebraic functions, trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, and exponential functions. So, look at the first letters. As you can see, uh, an acronym was formed, LIATE. L-I-A-T-H-E. Those stands for those kind of functions. Algebraic functions is also called polynomial functions. So, we could also have this acronym L-I-P-T-H-E. So, you may use the acronym LIATE or LIPTE for you to remember the order of elementary functions in selecting U and DB. Okay? For example, uh, we consider logarithmic functions first to be the U. If, then uh, we have uh, the inverse trigonometric functions, the algebraic or polynomial functions, the trigonometric functions, the hyperbolic function and the exponential function. So, for example, uh, our given has a logarithmic and a trigonometric function. So, because L is our first consideration based on our acronym, the logarithmic function will be the U and the trigonometric function will be the DB. Okay? So, in order for you to understand it better, I will show you an example. For example, evaluate each integrals. Number 1, the integral of x squared ln x dx. Number 2, the integral of x cosine x dx. Okay? Number 1. The integral of x squared ln x dx. So, based from our acronym, LIATE, so, look at the given. We have x squared, and we have ln x, and we have dx, okay? So, LIATE, L, logarithmic function. So, we have the logarithmic function here, which is ln x. And then, li. So, since L comes first before A, so we will consider L and X as our U. So, our DV will be X square DX. Okay? So, U is equal to L and X and get its DU. DU is equal to DX over X. Our DB is x squared dx. So, we will include the differential of x, okay, which is dx, since it is db, okay. So, if we are going to integrate it, b is equal to x cubed over 3, following the basic integration principle, okay. So, now let us follow our formula. The integral of x squared ln x dx is equal to the integral of u dv, and the integral of udb is equal to the integral of ub minus the integral of vdu. So now let us substitute our u, b, and du. Okay? So now we're going to have equals ln x times x cubed over 3 minus the integral of x cubed over 3 times dx over x. Okay? So as you can see, u is our, our ln x. 
then times b, which is x cube over 3, minus b du, the integral of v du, the integral of b, v is x cube over 3, times u, u is equal, or du, times du, so du is dx over x, okay? So, I hope you get that. So, multiplying those terms, we're going to have the integral of x squared ln x dx equals one-third x cubed ln x minus the integral of x squared dx over 3. Then, this will be equals one-third x cubed ln x minus one-third times integral of x squared dx. So, we put one third outside the integration symbol just like what we're doing before and as you can see x squared dx is already integrable so we can simply integrate it it will become one third x cube ln x minus one third times x cube over 3 plus c so as you can see x squared dx was integrated it became x cube over 3 plus c do not forget the constant of integration. So just uh, let's just simplify it. It will become one third x cube ln x minus one over nine x cube plus c. So this is our answer. Okay, so that is integration by parts. We call it integration by parts because. Uh, from the process or the name of the process itself, uh, we we separate the terms into parts. We, we determine the u, the dv, we get the du, we also get v, and then we substitute, then we just simplify, okay? Number two example, the integral of x cosine x dx. So from our acronym, LIATE, So, here we have x, an algebraic function. We have cosine x, a trigonometric function, which comes first from liate. L-I-A-T-H-E. Algebraic function. Very good. So, we're going to use u, or we're going to use x as our u. So, u is equal to x du is equal to dx and then our dv is cosine x dx from our given so integrate it b is equal to sine x and then apply integration by parts the integral of x cosine x dx is equal to the integral of u dv the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of b du so now let us substitute the values of u b and du so we're going to have uh, x sine x that's our uv minus the integral of sine x dx that's our v du okay so as you can see uh, sine x dx is already integrable so we can just integrate it so this will become equals x sine x minus negative cosine x plus c because the integral of sine x dx is negative cosine x so we have uh, two negatives here it's very understandable that it will become positive so it will be equals x sine x plus cosine x plus c so this is now our answer Okay. Now I want you to try this given number three, the integral of e to the x sine x dx. The answer will be one half e to the x times sine x minus cosine x plus c. And number four, the integral of x squared cosine two x dx. The answer will be 
2x squared minus 1 sine 2x plus 2x cosine 2x all over 4 plus c. So now, post the video and answer the following using integration by parts. After answering, you may na, you may unpost the video and check whether your answer is correct. Okay? So, let me show you the solution for number 3. I hope you're going to get the same and correct answer. Number 3, the integral of e to the x sin x dx. So, we have an exponential function. We have a trigonometric function. So, based from our liate, we should consider the trigonometric function first to be the u. So, our u is equal to sin x. So, du is equal to cosine x dx. Our db is e to the x dx. So, our b is equal to e to the x. Okay? And then, let us apply integration by parts. The integral of e to the x sine x dx is equal to the integral of u dv, which is equal to the integral of ub minus the integral of b du. And now, substitute the values of u, b, and du. So, we're going to have u is sine x times b, which is e to the x, minus the integral of u, which is e to the x, times du, which is cosine x dx. That's why we have equal sine x times e to the x minus the integral of e to the x times cosine x dx. Okay, so this is what we have obtained. So let's just uh, multiply the two terms. This will become the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x dx. Okay? Now, so look at uh, this part, the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. So we have two different type of functions here. We have e to the x, which is a logarithmic function. We have cosine x, which is a trigonometric function. So in this case, when this happened, we are going to apply integration by parts again. So now we're going to have another set of u and v. So it's uh, it's the same as earlier. We are going to con we will going to consider the trigonometric function first. as our u and then our db will be the exponential function. So let us uh, do this. The integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus the integral of u dv where our u is cosine x and our du is negative sine x dx. So our db is e to the x dx and our v is e to the x. So... Let us substitute the values of u, v, and db. So we're going to have the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus. So this is now our u, v. Our u is cosine x. Our v is e to the x. That's why we have here cosine x times e to the x minus the integral of b du. Our v is e to the x. Our du is negative sine x dx. That's why we have here e to the x times negative sine x dx. Okay? So, let us uh, multiply those terms which needed to be multiplied. So, this will become the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Let us remove the parentheses. So our terms will become like this. The integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So this is what we have obtained. What did you notice? 
So we have obtained uh, e to the x sine x and negative e to the x cosine x. But in the last term, we have the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So it is the same with our given. Look, our given, the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So here we have the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So meaning to say, uh, we're going to repeat the process over and over again. Okay? So now, if you encounter something like this, let's say uh, you have obtained a result similar to our given, so we can apply our algebraic skills. We can simply transpose this to the other side of the equation, like this one. So since it is negative integral of e to the x sine x dx, when transposed to the other side of the equation, it will become plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So now we're going to have the integral of e to the x sine x dx plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. So I hope you can still follow. So adding these two similar terms will become 2 the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. So divide both sides of the equation by 2 or multiply both sides of the equation by 1 half. So we're going to have 1 half times 2 the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals 1 half times e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. So uh, this will be eliminated. This will become simply the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals 1 half times e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. Okay, so this we obtain this, but uh, let us not forget the constant of integration because we, form, we perform the process of integration. So let us add c, okay? Now we have the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals 1 half times e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x plus c. So this could actually be our final answer. We can also express this as 1 half e to the x times sine x minus cosine x plus c. Okay, so e to the x was just factored out. We can also express our answer as e to the x times sine x minus cosine x all over 2 plus c. So you may choose whatever form of final answer, but I assure you, uh, either of the three is, a, is considered as a correct answer. Okay? So that is the essence of integration by parts. It could, you could have a very long solution but it's worth it, okay? It is actually easy if you will apply the principles or the rules that we have we have learned earlier. Okay, for number four, we have the integral of x squared cosine 2x dx. So we have an algebraic function here. We have a trigonometric function here. So based from our liate a, a before t, so we will consider x squared as our u. So u is equal to x squared, du is equal to 2x dx. And our dv is equal to cosine 2x dx. So our v is equal to negative 1 half sine 2x. If you wonder why it became 1 half sine 2x, you apply the principle of integrating trigonometric functions. Okay? So the integral of x squared cosine 2x dx is equal to the integral of u dv, which is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. That's our formula for integration by parts. So now let us substitute the values of u, v, and du. So now we are going to have x squared times 1 half sine 2x minus the integral of 1 half sine 2x times 2x dx. Or this will become x squared times 1 half sine 2x equals the integral of x sine 
to x dx. Okay? So in this case, uh, we're going to perform integration by parts again because we have two different functions here. Okay? So you know the liate, you know how it works. So you understand that our u is equal to x, our du is equal to dx, db is equal to sine 2x dx, and v is equal to negative 1 half cosine 2x. Okay? So let us multiply uh, x squared times 1 half sine 2x is equal to 1 half x squared sine 2x. So this is uh, those terms in the parentheses is actually uh, came from our integration by parts because we have uh, uv, our u is x, our v is negative 1 half cosine 2x. Multiplying those, we're going to have negative 1 half x cosine 2x minus the integral of uh, v du, our v is negative 1 half cosine 2x, our du is dx. That's why we have here the integral of negative 1 half cosine 2x dx. So let us uh, try to simplify. This will become 1 half x squared sine 2x minus negative 1 half x cosine 2x plus 1 half the integral of cosine 2x dx. So we put uh, 1 half outside the integration symbol. So it is negative 1 half times negative. That, that why, that's why it became positive. I know you know that. Okay. And then uh, we have this, so let us remove the parentheses. It will became, or it, it will become 1 half x squared sine 2x plus 1 half x cosine 2x minus 1 half integral of cosine 2x. So cosine 2x dx is already integrable. So this will become 1 half x squared sine 2x plus 1 half x cosine 2x minus 1 port sine 2x plus c. Okay? If you integrate cosine 2x dx, it will result to 1 half sine 2x. So multiply to 1 half, that's why it, be, it became negative 1 port sine 2x plus c. Okay? I know you understand that. So this is considered as our final answer. Okay? But we can uh, write our answer in different form. We could write our final answer in terms of 1 half x squared sine 2x minus 1 fourth sine 2x plus 1 half x cosine 2x plus c. So as you can see, uh, both the terms with sine 2x are written beside each other. Then if you want to write your answer as a single rational expression, you can do that. The LCD is 4, obviously. So that's why it became 2x squared sine 2x minus sine 2x plus 2x cosine 2x all over 4 plus c. And then uh, for our answer to be similar with what I have shown you before, we can factor out sine 2x because as you can see, it's a common factor. That's why it became 2x squared minus 1 times sine 2x plus 2x cosine 2x all over 4 plus c okay so i hope you enjoyed integration by parts now uh, in some given the tibp or the tabular integration by parts can be applicable this look like uh, a shortcut or an easier process of integration by part let me show you Let's say we have the integral of x cosine x dx. So in this given, we can use integration or tabular integration by parts. In tabular integration by parts, we need three columns. The first column is for alternate signs. The second column is for the derivative of u. And for the third column, we have the integral of dv. Okay? Alternate signs. So let's start with positive. Followed by negative and then positive. Derivative of u, so our u is our algebraic function, which is x, based from our liate. We will still follow liate in tabular integration by parts. So our, div, our the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have three rows for this uh, 
table for rows to be specific that's uh we will end if there's uh, if our u became zero already okay then integral of db our db is cosine at dx integrate it it will become sine x integrate it again it will become negative cosine x okay so our first term will be the product of the positive sign the x and the sine x okay and then our second term will be minus 1 times negative cosine x okay let me show you on the next uh, slide okay so this this will how tabular integration by part will looks like so and positive x times sine x is what positive x sine x okay that's it positive x sine x and our second term negative 1 times negative cosine x that's it negative 1 times negative cosine x okay so negative negative cosine x will become positive so okay by the way uh, let's not forget the c or the concept of integration so now we have x sine x plus cosine x plus c and this is our answer so if you're going to compare this from our first example using the conventional method of integration by parts uh, you, you get the same answer okay Oh, now let us use tabular integration by parts in this given we have the integral of x squared cosine to x dx alternate signs derivative of u integral of dv alternate signs so positive our u is x squared our dv is cosine to x and then negative the derivative of x squared is 2x and then the integral of cosine 2x dx is 1 half sine 2x. And then positive because the signs are or the signs should be alternate. The derivative of 2x is now 2. And the integral of 1 half sine 2x is negative 1 fourth cosine 2x. Then negative the derivative of 2 is 0. So we're going to stop right there. And then we will not add another row. Let us now just get the integral of negative 1 fourth cosine 2x, which is negative 1 over 8 sine 2x. And then our first term will be the product of positive x squared times 1 half sine 2x. Our second term will be negative. Oh, that's, that's it. That's it. Our second term will be negative 2x times negative 1 fourth cosine 2x. Okay, that's it. Negative 2x times negative 1 fourth cosine 2x. And then our third term will be positive 2 times negative 1 over 8 sine 2x. That's it. 1 power plus 2 times negative 1 over 8 sine 2x plus c. So we're not going to have a fourth term because as, as you can see here, uh, it will be multiplied to zero. So, okay, that's why we're going to stop there. Now we have here what uh, the integral of x squared cosine 2x. So this is what we have obtained through tabular integration by parts. We have uh, x squared times 1 half sine 2x minus 2x times negative 1 fourth cosine 2x plus 2 times negative 1 over 8 sine 2x plus c. Okay, so let us uh, multiply those terms. We're going to have 1 half x squared sine 2x plus 1 half x cosine 2x minus 1 fourth sine 2x plus c. So as you can see, this is the same from what we have obtained before. This time we have used tabular integration by parts. Okay. So 
Before you end watching this video, I want you to answer this short quiz. Evaluate each integrals. Number one, the integral of x e to the x dx. Number two, the integral of x cubed e to the x dx. Number three, the integral of x second x tangent x dx. Number four, the integral of x cubed sine x dx. Okay. So I advise you you solve it first using the conventional method of integration by parts. Then after that, you try solving this using tabular integration by parts. So if you have questions, just uh, put your comments or you can send a personal message to me so I can accommodate and answer your answers or your questions for clarifications. So I hope this video help you learning integration by parts. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something. Always remember that math is fun, so together let's do it right. And study hard so you can stay sharp and stay bright. Stay home, stay safe. God bless everyone.